right so like one dimensional problems for each mesh element we should consider interpolation functions right so proper interpolation functions must be developed for triangular and quadrilateral elements right cause we widely use these element types for two dimensional domains so let's start with triangular elements uh, here you can see a linear triangular element right I, as i said we should store the connectivity list counterclockwise for each mesh element and this is linear triangular element in the x and y plane and again we have master element we have reference element in the eta and zeta plane right this is the standard element and this is the real element so first we should be able to map we should have a conformal map to translate to map this arbitrary element onto this element okay so here we have three mesh nodes per this element this is a linear triangular element like linear and quadratic mesh that we had for one dimensional problems we have the same concepts here linear triangular element quadratic triangular element cubic triangular element and so on so first let's focus on linear triangular elements uh, here we have three nodes per each element right these vertices and we should have three interpolation functions n1 n2 and n3 so n1 n2 and 3 are functions of eta and zeta so i can use this linear function for example here as you can see we have three constants c1 c2 and c3 right because we have the x and y coordinate of three mesh points actually we know six values x and y coordinates of uh, these three points right so for each interpolation function we have three unknowns we have three import interpolation functions and you know that we know the value of interpolation functions on each mesh node of each element right the value of n1 should be equal to 1 for this point 0 and 0 and its value should be 0 for 2 and 3 right its value should be 0 for this point and this point so using this rule you can calculate c1 c2 and c3 finally you can deduce that n1 is equal 1 minus zeta minus eta right so when zeta and eta are equal to 0 n1 is equal to 1 and when this is equal to 1 and 0 the value of n1 is 0 and for this point is also 0 using the same procedure you can calculate n2 and n3 right so we know the value of n1 n2 and n3 and finally you can deduce that n1 plus n2 plus n3 is equal to 1 right actually we had this equation before also the summation of interpolation functions for each mesh element is equal to 1. So we can write 
this equation. Actually, we can write this equation. The value of voltage is equal summation of voltage at each element mesh point times n i. So this is a function of x and y, the voltage, right? Like before, we can write that equation. So you can see these linear triangular interpolation functions n1, n2, and n3, right? n1 is equal 1 for this point and is equal to 0 for this point. Actually, these functions are linear. We have surfaces here, right? For n1, n2, and n3, as you can see here. And these are equations in the standard element. For a triangular element, also we have area coordinate. Area coordinate is also interesting. Area coordinate is, for example, here for this element, for this reference element, if you consider this point inside the element, eta and zeta, and if this be A2, the area of this triangle, and A3 is area of this triangle, A1 is area of this triangle. Okay? Actually, the area of triangle in front of this point. This is A1. This is A3 in front of point 3. This is A2 in front of point 2. So, you can write N1 is equal A1 divided by A, N2 is equal A2 divided by A, and N3 is equal A3 divided by A. This is interesting, right? A is the area of the triangle, and you can calculate the value of N1, N2, and N3 for each arbitrary point inside this triangle using these geometrical equations that is beautiful. And also you can see the summation is equal to 1. So we call this area coordinate. Okay. And here you can write the value of unknown quantity, primary unknown quantity, is something like this. The summation of the value of the solution variable at each mesh point element mesh point times the corresponding interpolation function okay so what we need now is a transformation equation how we can map right how we can map the arbitrary triangle onto a standard triangle right how we can do this map using these two equations that you can see here this is the x and this is the y coordinate of each arbitrary point in the arbitrary element, right? Uh, we have x and y coordinates, x and y coordinates, and this summation. So using equation 2.22, you can do this transformation, right? Using this equation and these equations let me show you an example i create a new m file i save it as triangular triangular element map save dlc clear close all suppose we have this arbitrary element i write here one three and one three and five y coordinate equal to for example one one and four so Let's also plot the x and 
y coordinate uh, i write here x and y this color color is a and also i'm going to use the hatch function also for this element we know this is one two three and this is x y transpose so if i run this code you can see this arbitrary element right so how we can translate it onto the standard element using this equation x and y so we have these quantities x21 x31 y21 y31 so i can write here x21 that is x2 minus x1 and x31 copy x31 we have the same thing for y y21 y2 minus 1 y3 minus y1 right these equations and this is the map actually x is equal x1 plus each arbitrary variable for zeta and eta so also we can have the reverse map that we will discuss it later here we get eta and zeta and we map on x and y so here i can write eta that is equal zero zero and one for the reference element zeta is zero zero excuse me zero one and zero one and zero and zeta is equal zero zero and one right so i can have something like this let me hold all mesh elements and also plot this eta and zeta so i write here sub plot one two two because I, I'm going to create multiple plots in one figure. One to one, I write here eta and zeta. And let me check. This is sub plot, sub plot, right? This is the reference coordinate and this is the element arbitrary element and this is the reference element so i am going to check if we have the correct map or not here again i calculate x map and y map using this equation this equation 2.22 x map is x1 is equal x1 plus x21 times eta plus x31 times zeta and the y coordinate is something like this y y y now i am going to plot 
X map and Y map on what we had at the first, but different colors. Let's use blue here and red here and run the code. Right? You can see uh, we considered a reference element and uh, we did transformation right so if i plot like this i think it's much more better two 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 one two two four right you can see this is the first element we mapped it onto this element and this is the element after mapping again from a standard element to this arbitrary element and as you can see here these two elements are the same and this is the transformation that we use when we map the arbitrary element to the standard mesh element you can prove this equation not much complex so do you have any question about this topic no it's clear in fact it is very good okay